All right, today I want to talk about hypertrophy, but before we do, got a task to run. Before and I gotta wake up first, but homeless guy has a dog, gonna go help him move, but try to talk him out of his dog. So let's get started. <laughs> Now, if that wasn't enough, then this happened. So this guy happened. Look at this. It's tough. He bit a little girl's face, but she's all right. I mean, they do some incredible things. You just got to work through some of their behavior issues, but rarely do I ever get a teddy bear that looks just like this. My simple attempt to make a quick video about hypertrophy turned into a long all day. Now we're on day two of this video, but Shit happens, right? This video all started from a question I got from one of my clients, and it was simply, what kind of training do you do? Do you do hypertrophy training? Some say hypertrophy. I don't think that's right, but I like hypertrophy better. And my first thought was, how do I explain this concept to somebody? Because to me, hypertrophy isn't a style of training, it's a result. I remember going to college, sitting there, and one of my first classes was like a Nutrition 101 sports training, you know, going for kinesiology. And I sat there and listened to the teacher talk about the different types of training for strength and for growth and hypertrophy training and all these things. And I remember him saying along the way, and I was only 19 at the time, you know, hypertrophy is best or most optimal at seven reps. And immediately like a red flag went off my head. And that's not right. I know that I was 19 at the time, but I knew that not to be true because I never did seven reps in my life. Everything I did was 20 reps, 20 reps or more. And I remember sitting there thinking, how am I going to sit here for the next four years and listen to this, knowing full heartedly, I don't believe a damn thing this guy says now because he's reading out of a textbook that I know to be bullshit. For all the years of training myself and clients, I figured out these three things are the things you need to get right to create muscle growth, hypertrophy, whatever you want to call it. This is how you make it happen. All right, number one. Number one, an increased stress on your body. I know that sounds general. <clears throat> number one, an increased stress on your body. Now, I know that sounds kind of general. Number one, an increased stress on your body. Now, I know that sounds kind of general, but follow with me here. It could be any different things, right? You could be doing drop sets. You could be overloading your body over a period of time with consistently going up in weight. It could be ascending different sets. It could be giant sets. Whatever it, whatever it has to be, for you to push yourself to that next level. Everybody's different. So some people respond to drop sets better. Some people respond to progressively overloading themselves with weight. It is truly dependent on you as an individual. So that's where the testing comes in to figure out what works best for you. When you put yourself under that much added stress, things change, right? Hormones get released, cortisol, testosterone, growth factors. Things change. Satellite cells get active. That's where the magic happens, but that leads me to my next point. You need to have this. You need to have an adequate amount of protein. I get this question all the time, how much do you take in? Just start with a gram per pound. If your kidneys are safe, you're, you're functioning fine, a gram per pound to start and then go from there. But most people underestimate how hard that actually is. I mean, it's hard to take in a gram of protein per pound of body weight. It takes a lot of serious eating. I don't care what kind you get. You can do it through whole food if you want. I do six shakes a day. It really doesn't matter. It's just preference. Now, the reason you do this is because as that testosterone gets released to your body, protein synthesis goes up, right? So you're more able to process more protein. So you need to feed the beast, basically. And finally, number three, consistency. Now, I know that is like the most boring. It should have put that at number one because nobody wants to hear it be consistent. But trust me, if you can stay consistent for even eight weeks, you'll see a dramatic change. So often I run into people and they... They get frustrated from even their own program, their idea. You know, that's one of the nice things about having a coach is they'll say, hey, do this for 8, 12 weeks, come back to me. Or I do it with my people, I do it weekly basis, so I give them four, four weeks at a time, work with them on it, and then change in the next four weeks. But the nice thing about that is you are set into this program and you can't talk yourself out of it. Because even me, I get kind of in my own head at times, is this the route I should be taking to get the growth I want or get the change I want? and you second guess yourself. And it really is that simple. If you're consistent, you get enough protein in, 
and you put enough stress on your body, over time you're going to grow. It's just a matter of how, how much you're going to grow based upon how much you push yourself, how well you feed yourself, and how consistent you are over time. So I hope that helps. Sorry that video took forever to put out, but I've got a lot of dogs to save. So have an incredible day. I'll talk to you soon. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you're not, please do. I'll get more good videos out to you. Have an incredible day.